This is the wash down process. Oh, the wash it's down process. It's important to have a coffee in one hand and a hose in the other. So are you working hard or are you hardly working? Yes. <laughs> That's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, look, at, look at the hose. You can see the hose on there, the water. It's working. 24 hours ago, nothing in this corner. And then that's Isn't it? what is impressive. These guys are the best for a reason. And they delivered. They have clearly done magic. Yeah. Well, you know, there was a lot of heavy lifting done this past couple hours, especially getting these rocks put in place here. I lifted this rock <laughs> off the back of the dump truck yesterday. Probably the biggest rock that I lifted. So what is the start of day two? Ed, Brian, what do you think? Get rolling? Battery, battery, battery for battery. fabric. Battery, battery, battery. <laughs> Let's go! So what's the plan today, guys? We're starting day two, and I see you're putting in, is this pond felt? It's just a geotextile fabric. Okay. We put it down to protect the liner, so before the liner goes in, it just gives it a cushion. And there's actually two different thicknesses. If you feel this fabric here compared to that stuff. Oh yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, big, big difference. So being inside, we're gonna, just a safety precaution. Yeah. The last thing we'd ever wanna see is a leak. Right. And it just gives the liners just some added security. So what are the steps that we're gonna go through today, just out of curiosity? What is your goal for when this will be accomplished. You guys are saying you're gonna get done today? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. My guess is, well, I don't know, what do you guys think? 1.30? Two, 145? I'm gonna say 3.30. No way! Ooh, we got 1.30, 1.45, and 3.30. I'm gonna go for four o'clock. I'm saying four o'clock. Chris, what do you got? I like Brian's optimism. I'm going you know one. Ed's gonna do something to slow no. us down now, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. I just know how production goes right? and lunch goes, so I'm sticking to my four o'clock, but I've got all the faith in the world that if this ends by 1.30, it's gonna be phenomenal, so. So the next step is we get this fabric, then we're gonna put a liner in here. We'll probably cut up some of this stuff, use it for additional pads on top of the liner, and then we start rocking it in. And there's really not much to rock in. Nope. Like, it'll go pretty quick, I think. Is that a rock pun? Because you've got a giant pile of rocks over here, and I'm very excited to see how you guys are gonna get these rocks into here. It's gonna be a lot of heavy lifting, isn't it? That's why you're here. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. Actually, I have my one rock over on the windowsill there. It's called the cornerstone. It's the smallest rock that I moved in. One of two rocks, by the way. All right, well, it looks awesome. And the mulch is gonna be one of the next steps too, right? It is. We will need that kind of here and there. same time as we're doing rock work. All right, I'm gonna go bag some mulch. Perfect. put on my head. Look at this, I can completely disappear and hide inside of this box, watch. It's like a transformer. Where's Coyote? I don't know. <laughs> Hermit Crab Peterson, that's what they call me now. See ya. <laughs> Wow, that looks super cool, right? Now, will that actually be partially in the water? Yeah, yeah so the okay. bottom of that. Oh man, the turtles are gonna love hiding under those little catacombs. And so is that out far enough then to still create that waterfall? We should get that rock. You wanna get the big one? Yeah, big one in, and then see oh. what we have here. All right, well, very cool. So, this yeah, place was it, the same it, as it, I it, guess. It <laughs> We are bagging up mulch, and by we, I mean everybody except for me. I'm just here organizing the bags, but look at that, an entire dump truck load of mulch that's almost completely put into these recycled pond block bags. That's what you call being brilliant on location. When you need garbage bags, you need a way to put mulch into the pond lining so that it doesn't poke holes in things. This is exactly the way to do it. It's very simple. All you need is a shovel, a plastic bag, and some mulch. Put the mulch inside the bag. Nature's pillow right there. Absolutely perfect. I'll 
say something unintelligent to make you sound super smart. <laughs> You're gonna really have to dumb that down. <laughs> so Chris, it looks like you're doing something rather important here. This is the skimmer, correct? That is correct. What's so, our process for putting this together? We have a couple components that are going to be needed to make that watertight seal. This is where the pump is housed inside the skimmer. This is also what's gonna maintain that skimming action, that top water draw. So this is what's going to keep all that windblown debris that falls on top of the pond and pull it in one direction for easy maintenance rather than letting it settle out to the bottom. <laughs> so this is a super, super important component on any water feature. So what we're doing is we're just gonna attach the face plate to the skimmer and the weir door assembly, which will go inside the skimmer. So it's just basically attaching the two pieces. Okay. So, and without this piece of equipment in the pond, essentially would just turn into a scummy algae ridden mess, correct? Correct. Yeah. What this does is the pump sitting inside of the skimmer box is going to draw that water in. The way it's designed is there is a weir door that flops open and the water is drawn through this opening here. That's maintaining that top water draw and it's pulling all of the windblown debris that falls onto the surface of the water and pulls it into one direction and it collects in a basket that sits inside the skimmer, makes it convenient for you to get all that debris out of your pond now, rather than it falling to the bottom. Let me ask you this question. Is there any danger of an animal, like one of our turtles getting sucked into that? And if they were to get sucked into there, is there a way for them to get to the surface to breathe? The neat thing about it is this door, as long as the pump is running, it's drawing the water in, it's keeping that door down. So the turtles, fish, whatever are in here will be able to freely move in and out of here. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. And is this difficult to clean out if you need to clean it? It's not. There's a skimmer basket. This actually sits inside of the skimmer box. Okay. And it's nice because it's got a handle, it's point loaded, so it's not going to tip back on you when it's full of debris. But you can see it's perforated all the way around, but all the large debris will collect in here and it's just a very easy thing to empty out and clean occasionally. Sounds awesome. All right, well, let's put it so, together and get it ready for working. <laughs> So I've got the faceplate secured now to the skimmer box. What I did was, is I applied a bead of silicone behind the liner mm -hmm. to the face of the skimmer box itself. Fixed the liner to the skimmer box and then mounted the faceplate to it. And I got the four corner screws in. So now it's nice and secure. And I went through with our machine screws and just kind of poked the hole every other screw hole just to get it started. Make it really easy for those screws to get in there and sink into the grommets, which are attaching to the interior portion of the skimmer faceplate assembly. So now we're just going to go through and, and I do it kind of the way you take lug nuts on or off of a car hub. So I just kind of alternate and go around rather than going all the way around. Okay. I have no rhyme or reason for that. It's just the way that I do it. So go through and alternate as you go. And then when you get all of them in, go back around one more time just to make sure that you get everything nice and secure. Great. Are all these right. The screws? These are the screws. There's your screwdriver. All right. I can That's do that. Tough process of driving in the screws. Let's see if I can get this right. They have real difficult work for me. This is the real creative part. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we pre-drilled all the holes. Now all you need to do is successfully screw these screws in. I think I can handle that. I don't know if it leaks, it might be your fault. It's definitely gonna be my fault if it leaks, that's for sure. I get them all in place and then I'll go back and, and tighten them. Yeah, Chris drilled some perfect holes though. These are going in with no problem whatsoever. here in my hand what may be the coolest feature of this aquascape. Do you want to explain to everybody what it is that I'm holding on to here? Yeah, that is going to be awesome. So this is an underwater camera. So it looks like an underwater light, looks exactly like our underwater lights. In fact, it does have small LEDs around it, so it's going to help illuminate everything. What we're going to do is we have this wooden panel in the front. We're going to cut a hole in that. We're going to position it so it pierces right through all that water. Nice. Now, what this will do for everybody that visits the Nature Center is to provide them a unique look underneath the water ecosystem. So you see frogs, fish, tadpoles all swimming around. You can see it right up there on that big screen TV. So this will be placed here underwater and then you'll get a cool up close look at the underwater environment that's here on the islands. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> We're just 
just kind of foaming some stuff here. Finishing touches on the waterfall. This waterfall is gonna be pretty cool for how small it is. The water level in this pond is like right here. We really just have like a little two inch fall coming off of this into a small little pool and then another little three, four inch fall right here. But remember, we didn't want it too loud because in this room, if we had a big two foot high waterfall in here, it would be deafening throughout this whole space. So now we're just kind of foaming up. As the foam starts drying, you can actually see that it becomes kind of pliable. So I can come in here and push this stuff down and not get it all over my hands. This stuff here, get in there. So I want to push that back in. So as soon as it gets like the skin on it, then it's actually safe to do this. But I would not do it without gloves because if you touch the part that's not, that's on your finger for a very, very long time. <laughs> We're just trying to finish up all the little rock work and stuff. Now that all the cedar wall and everything is in, I'm just gonna finish rocking this in so it'll help lock this cedar wall in place and finish this off at the same time. Very, very important that this looks good because the camera is right there and I don't want my crappy work to be viewed by everybody. <laughs> okay. So now what we want to do is we want to stabilize that rock. It's still a little bit precarious. Turtles coming in and out and everything. So we're going to use that waterfall foam. Normally used in waterfalls, but it's also used in places to stabilize stone. So what you're going to do is dispense a little bit of that on top of that fabric. Okay. It's going to kind of bind to that stuff and then put the rock right back in place and let it cure. Not like that much? Yeah, that looks great. I just got to remember how you had the rock and it's... That looks great. Yeah. So now we just want to finish filling in all those little cracks and crevices with the gravel. And I think we're going to probably need to get, you know, I remember yesterday you were talking about you wanted turtles and stuff going underneath that. Sure. So I think maybe what we should do is get some of the smaller river rock okay. so we don't build that up too much and mm -hmm. we can kind of work that into, you know, all those little areas back there. We just don't want to see any of this material. Gotcha. So Covering up as, as much just, of the cloth as possible. You got it. Greg's in the room and I'm gonna try to fill this up before he grabs the hose out of my hand, but don't let him see this because he always steals this. And when he washes it down, he usually starts spraying everything and we don't want that to happen. It's just, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Someone needs to walk. It was my job. <laughs> I told you not to say anything. <sighs> you guys got some inside plan, don't you? No respect, no respect. Roddy Dangerfield. Someone's got to get these jobs. Someone's got to meet Coyote Peterson at VidCon and five years later build a pond. So the guys have done all the hard work. I'm coming in and do the important work, which is to make this thing clean because we got some turtles that we're going to be adding right back there. Hey, Coyote, you want to see my job when I do these projects? Yeah. Okay, here it is. Water! Whoa, whoa, is it gonna leak? Well, if it leaks, then someone's gonna be patching a hole. But no, this is the wash down process. Oh, the wash it's down important process. important to have a coffee in one hand and a hose in the other. So are you working hard or are you hardly working? Yes. <laughs> That's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all in the wrist. Okay. You know, it's the wrist. Can, I, can I give it a try? It, moving it, here you go. The wrist, moving it, moving it, moving Just a little movement of the wrist. Yeah. And what's the purpose of washing down the rocks if they're just gonna get covered in water at you the end? The the dirty, so like, we're gonna pump out. It must be somebody We're important. Pump all this water I've never out. been okay. able to do this. The next process is to start <laughs> pumping the water out. So will that help you determine if there's a leak? Not that I think there's a leak, but what are you doing in an instance like that where you remember build you, an Remember when you were a kid and drove your BMX bike everywhere and you got a hole and you went and you got a little rubber? That's how we fix a leak. Like 9.5 times out of 10, it's in the stream and the water falls. You just gotta lift up a low edge. Okay. Very rarely is it in the pond itself. Gotcha. Well, it certainly does look fantastic. We've got a common snapping turtle and a midland painted turtle to add in here to make sure that the camera's working and they're gonna prep the area for the turtles that are coming in. Look, look, at, look at the hose, you can see the hose on there, the water. It's working. Okay, 
fantastic. Amazing that that corner turned into uh, yeah. something like this. I was not expecting to see this when I walked in. <laughs> not like nothing like this. And this is just a little over 24 hours ago. Nothing in this corner. And then that's what is impressive, right? I mean, I was only in here a couple days ago, and you know, you don't expect to just like pow. -pow. Well, when Greg -pow. and Ed and Chris and Brian said, "Oh yeah, by 1:30 tomorrow afternoon, we're going like, to be putting oh, in the water," and I was sure. like, "Okay, but these guys are the best for a reason." And they delivered. They have clearly done magic. Yeah. Some witch craftery. It's going to be pretty cool to see some of the local species here, where kids are able to come in, see them, and my favorite thing, of course, is that underwater camera. So for people to be able to watch fish, frogs, tadpoles, it's going to yes. be super cool. Be able to see them up close. Yeah. Exactly. So guys, are we uh, are we getting close here? It looks like it's almost complete. Yeah, we're uh, we're like right there. I'm just kind of finishing foaming up some of the waterfall areas up in here. I got to add a little bit of gravel in through here. Okay. Chris is just kind of touching up these edges here. Mm -hmm. Got some of this moss down to finish up the edges. You can see the water's raising. I would imagine another 20 minutes, Chris, we're filling this thing up, huh? Or not filling up, plugging it in. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, there was a lot of heavy lifting done this past couple hours, especially getting these rocks put in place here. I lifted this rock. <laughs> off the back of the dump truck yesterday. Probably the biggest rock that I lifted. And I'm considering this the last rock that's going into this incredible design. Do you guys have a spot in mind for my special rock? I mean, I think it's all you. Yeah. And I, you know, I think I'm gonna put it right up there on that platform. This spot here looks like the absolute perfect <laughs> yes. location for my cornerstone rock. There we go, right in the light. I hope that that rock can live there successfully throughout the life of this aquascape. It was a heavy lift, but we did it. <laughs> You guys did an amazing job Good getting job, everything man. installed. <laughs> I moved a single rock and it looks fantastic. I think you're a pond builder. I feel like a pond yeah. builder. <laughs> Definitely a pond builder. That's awesome. So you ready to give birth to this creation? I am so ready for this. This is always fun. So push the start button on the pump. All right, you ready? And, and it comes to life. It's alive! Yes! Oh, yeah. It's working! Love it! Oh, look at that. That's amazing! Oh, my God. Little secret waterfalls on the side there. Oh my god, that was so good! Cool. Yeah. It is. Oh my yeah. God. Anything more would be overwhelming. I gotta I'm tell you. I want to redo my water features in the showroom after seeing this. This is so beautiful, so yeah, natural. You guys did such an amazing job. I can't even believe that this is a part of our nature center right now. This, this means the world to us. And well, you we're are, be proud of you were a fun person to work with, and I think we're going to have to come back next year and fix the one outside, guys. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm oh, in. It needs to happen. <laughs> what do you think, bud? Pretty amazing. Yeah. Now I just get the water flowing through here, and I think it's time to add the turtles. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. That is a little juvenile common snapping turtle right there. And at this age, they aren't too aggressive, but as soon as they get bigger, oh buddy, watch out. That is not a beak that you want biting you, that's for sure. So this new amazing indoor pond will be Albert's new home. Very sharp claws on this turtle too. And this here is Winslow. Winslow is a painted turtle and is very excited to get in the water as well. All right, are we doing a double turtle release at the same time? Is that what's happening? I think so. All right. Hey guys. All right, guys, well, it has been a full night's worth of hours. We're here the next morning. Nothing has leaked. The water's clearing up. It looks fantastic. <laughs> but I have to ask Brian, in building this, what was your biggest challenge, would you say, at constructing an aquascape indoors? Well, it's nothing like our typical system where we're out there with shovels and we're digging into the earth and we get to conform the existing topography into what we want it to be. And so building up is always a challenge rather than digging down. And so I would say that was definitely mine. What about you, Chris? I would say just the fact that we're on an island, right? And we didn't know, I mean, we had an idea of what we were doing, but just making sure that we had everything we needed. Yeah, know? it was awesome, Ed, like just shipped a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. made sure we had everything here. It was great to have some volunteers to bring some of those boulders in. I think it was an island effort, right? <laughs> I have to say, I am truly impressed. Like you said, being on an island, you've got limited resources. It's not like you just run down to Home Depot and get something if you didn't have it. You guys had every element necessary to get this installed in an insane amount of time. 
time, less than two days, this thing is up and running and ready for animals to be put into it. I can't wait to see the public use it, visitors come see it, and the reaction on their face. And I think the camera is just an awesome element. When they get those turtles in there and they start swimming around Coyote's Rock. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, hey, it was awesome meeting you. So fun working with you. Likewise, thank you, thank you guys yes, so much for coming up yes. here to the Lake Erie Islands. This nature center is now made it to the next level when it comes to 100%. education for the people that come and visit. Awesome. Thanks again. So if you guys thought this was a great episode, make sure you let us know in the comments section below. As always, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell so you stay up to date on all the current content that Team Octoscape is coming out with every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.